What's up everyone, welcome back to Sensei Awakening. We're back with another review, and this time we have the second SS unit available in the game. It's none other than the King of the Underworld himself, Hades. We're gonna take a look at all his skills, best Cosmo, team compositions, all of his mechanics, which are quite complicated to understand, but then when you start using him, it turns out it's not so bad. Now, before we jump on SCA to give him a look, there's a couple things you need to know about Hades. The first one, he is a double S Saint, which makes him a lot harder to summon. The rate for summoning a double S Saint is much lower than an S, so keep that in mind, it will take a lot of crystals. The second one, he's a lot more expensive to build. It takes more experience, it takes more resources in general, a lot of more a sense materials. So if you want to go full blast on him, you're gonna have to make a big investment. His skill-ups are also a problem because for double S Saints, you can only skill them up with green tomes. For each green tome, you have to combine two blue ones, making it twice as expensive to level up. The last thing is that this banner will be available for two full weeks. So you can use that strategy of doing 40 summons daily to maximize the number of shards you can get. If you do that, you'll get between 35 and 40 free shards at the end of the two weeks. But the last two days of this banner coincide with the next cat event. Remember, the cat is the one where you can give him summons and he always returns a little bit more. Usually we want to save all of our summons for the cat and maximize the number we can get back. Well, this banner ends on March 3rd. That's the last day you can summon Hades. And the cat event will be on March 2nd, which is the first Monday of every month. If you're not in a terrible rush to summon him or you're not going to go for the 40 a day strategy, then I would suggest waiting for the cat, maximizing the number of free summons you can get, and that gives you enough time to summon him on that Monday and build him to take full advantage of the powering up, the leveling up event. And that's it. Let's jump on Omri's SEA account. This is the last saying he pulled over there before he stopped playing that version entirely, so this will be the last review we can do on Omri's account. Alright, here we are, the last time we're looking at Omri's account here on SCA. Now, Hades is a character capable of some AoE damage, massive individual damage, and he also has some weird revival mechanics that can bring back his allies. Starting off with his first ability, the Sword of Hades, this is an individual cosmic type attack that starts off with a 140% multiplier, which is quite a bit higher than the usual S starting uh, multipliers of 100. It also has a 60% chance to apply a Slave Mark, which is a sort of debuff, though it doesn't really do anything specifically. It's a sort of debuff that's placed on the enemy, and then it ties into his third skill, which we're gonna look at later. So, individual Cosmo attack and a chance to Slave Mark. His second skill, the Great Eclipse version 1 is where things start to get really complicated or they seem complicated but then when you use them it turns out it's not so bad. At the beginning of the battle when we use the first part of this skill Hades is going to activate this great eclipse that doesn't do anything immediately. The great eclipse needs to charge for two rounds before the first effect takes place. Now something very important to keep in mind here is that it's two full rounds. It's not Hades turns so we can't accelerate the eclipse by giving him two turns with Luna. We have to wait for those two rounds to end. Now when that does happen then automatically at the start of Hades' third turn this skill is going to reduce the max HP of all enemies. Now this is a reduction in max HP. It's not direct damage so it's not something that can be healed. What this does is let's say at the beginning of the battle an enemy Shion has 100,000 HP. If we reduce 15% of that then for the remainder of the battle permanently he will only have 85,000 HP. This is on skill level 1. The reduction goes all the way down to 30% which is actually really really strong. After that first part of the skill is activated automatically on the third turn the skill transforms into the Great Eclipse 2 and that's what we're gonna have available for the remainder of the battle. The first part of the skill can only be used once. When we have the Great Eclipse 2, this becomes an individual level nuke. And I say nuke in the true meaning of the word because this thing starts off with a 520% multiplier. Besides doing that massive damage, it also lifesteals, so it heals Hades. With skill ups, the multiplier goes all the way up to 720% and the lifesteal is 100%. So all of the damage that we're doing, we're going to recuperate as HP. Whatever HP we don't need to heal, which is insane, gets converted into max HP. So Hades' max HP is going to keep increasing in battle the more he uses the skill, the more damage he does, and the more life he steals. At the end, we can increase our max HP by a maximum of 80%. So at the end of the battle, if we manage to use the skill a few times and do a lot of damage, we can end up with 180% of Hades' original max HP. That is insane. Once this skill starts doing damage, it becomes nearly impossible to kill Hades with chip damage. You need to one-shot him, or you need to control him. If you try to just chip away at it, it's impossible. It doesn't work. He'll keep healing himself repeatedly and eventually win the fight. The third skill, called Oblivion of the Dark, world cannot be used until the eclipse first takes place. So it's always very important to use this skill on the very first round of the fight, start counting those two rounds that it needs to wait, and then we get the Oblivion and also the Revenant skills available. The third one is a skill that allows us to redirect damage that would otherwise be done to Hades. So we establish a contract either with an enemy or with an allied unit. That unit is going to receive the damage that Hades normally would, but there's a couple 
conditions. We cannot establish the contract with an enemy unit unless we have the slave mark. Remember, that's what we acquire with the first skill. So we have to mark an enemy before we can establish the contract with them. If we don't have that slave mark on anyone, then the contract can only be established with an ally. We can only use this thing once per battle, and on skill level 1, it only lasts for one round, which is really kind of useless. So skill ups are hugely important here if we're going to use the contract, but the more I think about it, the less useful I seem to find this skill because, to be honest, when the Eclipse is done and we have the second skill available, we're going to be nuking over and over and over again, trying to increase our max HP and eliminate enemy units. I'm not sure how important this contract really is at the end of the day, but we're going to look at the skill ups because it does improve greatly. Now remember, the contract can be established with an enemy or with an ally. If the contract is with an ally, that ally would receive 260% of the damage that Hades would normally get. So if we're going to get 10,000 damage, the ally is going to take 26,000. That's unless we skill it up. If we manage to skill it up, then the damage goes to 100%. So the exact same damage that Hades would receive, the ally would receive. If the contract is with an enemy, that enemy will only receive 60% of the damage on skill level 1, but it goes to 100% on skill level 5. Now that's a lot of resources, but we can also stretch the number of rounds that the contract lasts, and then it can become a little more useful if you do decide to invest here. On skill level 1, it's one round. On skill levels 2 and 3, it's two rounds. And on skill levels 4 and 5, it lasts for three. So that's all the damage that Hades would normally receive during three rounds is going to go to somebody else, either ally or enemy. The last skill, the Revenant, is a passive that again can only be activated after the Eclipse takes place. This skill allows Hades to revive allied saints that have died in the battle. It starts off at only a 60% chance to revive and the way it works is that when an ally dies, they have a certain chance, starts at 60, to leave a ghost behind or to leave their spirit or soul behind. Now this soul comes back with only a tiny bit of HP, so it's very easy to finish it off. However, if the enemy can't kill it in time and that unit gets a turn, it will revive with a little bit more HP and all of its attack power. On skill level 1, we only have a 60% chance to revive, but on skill level 3, it already goes to 100%. The amount of HP that they come back with also goes up. The soul will receive 5%, and if we manage a full revive, it will come back with 10%. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that the saints that we revive also receive a lot more extra damage. That makes it really easy to take them out again, but who knows? It may be useful in some situations where everything depends on somebody getting one attack off, we manage to revive it, it gets a turn, it kills someone, we win the fight. Otherwise, those saints are going to be killed easily again, and they can only be revived once. Having said that, and getting to the topic of which skills to level up, I do think it's a useful skill. Not so much because that revive saint is going to do something super special, I think there's a very low chance of that happening, but because it takes focus away from the enemy. If they have to worry about killing the soul or the revived saint before it does something stupid, then they're going to take their focus off of Hades, he's probably going to have his super powerful attack up by that time, and if the enemy doesn't focus it, he's going to get a chance to use it and one-shot someone. So even though I don't think the revive saint is going to be useful, I would still recommend skilling this up to at least level 3, then there's a 100% chance that they'll have to worry about at least a soul. Maybe they never get the full revive, but they'll have to change focus and kill that soul before it comes back. To be able to open all of the 8 cents, we also need to have 2 skills level up, so there's one that we're gonna have to do somewhere. Now that's a tough choice between the Great Eclipse and the Oblivion. Now, I said this skill was not amazingly useful, but taking it to only level 2, we already have it available for 2 rounds, so that's 2 whole rounds where Hades can't be touched. It gives the Great Eclipse a chance to finish, and he can start getting his own attack off, which heals him, so then he'll be less likely to get killed. For a minimum Hades, I would probably take Oblivion to level 2 and the Revenant to level 3. Now that's just minimum, obviously, an optimal, amazing, super cool Hades is gonna need a lot more tomes. Ideally, if I had an infinite number of tomes available and I wanted to go all in on Hades, then I would love to have the Sword of Hades in skill level 3, because at this point we have a 90% chance to apply the Slave Mark, so it's very likely that we're gonna get it. I would take this one to level 4 like Omri has it here, because not only do we get a huge boost to the damage, we also get 100% lifesteal, so all of the damage we're gonna be doing, we're gonna recuperate his HP. Oblivion would be at level 4 because then we have it available for 3 rounds and that's really OP having Hades do all that damage and nobody being able to touch him. And the Revenant I would do at 3 which is the same level I recommended for a minimum Hades. This way we have a 100% chance for the souls to come back and they come back with a little bit more HP. So a minimum 1, 1, 2, 3 and an ideal Super Hades 3, 4, 4, 3. Moving on to the 8 cents because he is one of these cool guys that does a little bit of everything and is super powerful, he benefits from all the areas. However, there is a little bit of a priority. I would start with Gamma, which is what Omri did here, which gives us a good boost to our Cosmo attack, increasing our damage, and also 7.5% more lifesteal, making it even harder for the enemies to take us out. I would then do Beta with HP and status resistance, make sure that he can't be controlled because that's one of his weaknesses. Then Alpha with more attack and more HP, and lastly I would do Delta with some HP and damage resistance. This is usually the last one for attackers. 
His Cosmo is also pretty straightforward. As a Cosmo attacker, we're gonna be looking for everything that increases the damage, but also a little bit of survivability. This guy is very annoying if we let him survive until turn three. So the enemy's gonna be trying to focus and get rid of him. We need to be able to survive those first couple of turns until we can start healing ourselves with the second skill. Under Solar, we're gonna go for Rosary with two boosts of attack and also Cosmo damage. And just in case you can't farm this yet because you have an open shrine or whatever, you have the classic options of Cosmic Stone and Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye being the slightly better choice because of the HP boost. In Lunar, I would definitely go knowing with a big HP boost, but again, a lot of status resistance. Remember, his weakness is control. If he can't move, he can't do crap. A decent second option in today's super heavy Cosmo attacker meta is Spirit Print with Cosmo defense, Cosmo damage resistance, and also HP. Under Star, I think there's no doubt if you have it available and you're already farming it, Hummingbird would be choice number one. Cosmo attack, speed, and Cosmo damage. A second option in case you don't have it yet would be New Moon. Make sure you can get that move off, get that eclipse started as soon as possible, and help you establish that contract with an enemy you want to get rid of quickly. In Legendary, it gets slightly more complicated uh there's a couple of options you can go for a sort of defensive build as i explained already hades is really annoying after round three so it's very likely that the enemy is going to be trying to take you out quickly rising dragon teeth can help you survive those first two rounds until his strong attack that heals him is available that would be my number one choice for protective cosmo if you want to go with the balls to the walls hades though and you want to get for as much attack as possible then there's a couple of options that actually fit him quite nicely wind elf is going to increase your damage as the rounds go by the more times you attack the more stacks you get the more damage you do on the next move Salamander is a good option for him and I like it because you probably have some laying around that you haven't used on anybody else. This thing increases your Cosmo attack by 50% after you kill a unit. Now remember, when Hades starts using that second nuke, that second skilled individual nuke, it's very likely that you're going to be able to one-shot the weakest members of their party. Start off by killing one of those, get the 50% buff, and on the next round, keep killing and killing and you'll be able to take advantage of Salamander pretty much every single turn. The last options are the classic Vulcan Chain and King Giant depending on whether you want to maximize your damage at the start of the battle or at the end. All of these options that we mentioned increase his survivability in some way, Salamander and Vulcan Chain with a lot of defense, and then King Giant and Rising Dragon Teeth with HP. As for substance, we're going to be looking for five things. HP and resistance to survive and make sure we don't get controlled, Cosmo Attack and Cosmo Damage to increase our damage output, though he really, he hits so hard that you don't have to go too crazy with the attacker stats. The damage will be huge anyway. And lastly, speed. In today's meta, it's really, really hard to play with slow units. Those Divine Pegasus, Arayashikis, and now Rebirth Milo are just gonna tear you up if you don't move quickly. All right, now another not so straightforward subject with Hades is his teams. This guy is really freaking strong, okay? He has amazing stats, he hits like a truck, and he can revive, so he really fits in anywhere. He's not a high energy consumption unit, so you can just park him in any part of any team, and he can do his job. It's kind of like Shion. Just leave him there at the end, he can use the shield, he can nuke, without using a ton of energy. The important thing with Hades is that he survives those first two rounds, so some protection wouldn't be bad. Maybe some shields with Mu, maybe a protection from instant death from Saori, and Juna's Vine, which is pretty much an every single team right now until uh, Rebirth Shura comes out, she's still an amazing option to prevent units from dying immediately. Other than that, he goes well everywhere, guys, really. I mean, obviously, don't bring him as the only attacker. Always bring at least two or three attackers. That way, the enemy can't focus him solely and control him or stun him or whatever. Make sure you have more than one threat, something to distract the enemy, and yeah, just watch Hades do work after a couple rounds. The one partner in crime I'll mention specifically is Luna for a couple of reasons. First, in round one, you can activate the Eclipse and then immediately use the skill one to get the Slave Mark on someone, allowing you to establish the contract on round two, right when he moves. Second option, activate the Eclipse on round one, give somebody else double turn, and on round two, give it to Hades, do the slave mark, and immediately do the contract. Third option, his individual nuke only uses two energy. Give him two turns with Luna and watch him kill two units every single turn. It's freaking ridiculous. So Luna is definitely a really good friend. I'm actually going to start working really seriously on my Luna, make her a lot tankier, faster, and awaken her eight cents all the way. This is a unit that never stops being useful because there's nobody else that can do what she does in the game. As far as weaknesses, he does not have a lot to be honest. His stats are amazing other than Cosmo defense. He has A and S everywhere. Really high base HP, really high physical defense. So those uh, physical attackers that can one shot are going to have a really hard time taking him out. His big weakness is going to be control. He's not immune to anything. So he can be silenced. He can be stunned. He can be frozen. So it's not a terrible idea to combine him with units that can protect him from that. Either Arayashiki with the automatic cleanse, Saori with the cleanse, Shion with his shield that gives immunity. All of those fit him really well to counter that weakness to control. Lastly, he has a very funny kind of weakness 
this because it's not a saint that we see too often in battle, but remember, Hades has the ability to revive his allies, right? There's a unit in the game that can block revivals automatically and she loves to dance, it's Katya. So if this girl is in the fight, Hades' fourth skill is pretty much invalidated, it's useless, it's never gonna activate. And that's really it, those are all the details on Hades, like I mentioned at the start, the mechanics sound really complicated, but when we see him in the demonstration now, you see that it's actually not so bad. I'm first gonna go to the trial area because there's a couple of things that I want to show you in a controlled environment when nobody's trying to kill me, and then we'll do an arena battle and hopefully we do well because the Cosmo on this account at this point is very old, the Saints have not gotten any love in months, so hopefully we get lucky and we can see some of his skills proc and have an interesting fight. Alright, here we are in the trial area, and most of the units that you see here are here only because they're really fast. I want to make Hades the slowest one because these stuns always attack the slowest enemy on your team. So, I'm going to start off by generating some energy. Krishna is just here. He's really just out for a stroll, but I'm going to do this anyway because I feel like it. Come on, bro. It's your time to shine. And I'm going to give the double turn to Hades to show you a couple of things. The first one is that skills 3 and his passive in the 4th skill are not available until we use the Eclipse. Now, when I use the Eclipse, which should be the very first thing you do in every fight, if you're using Hades, make sure you always save 2 energy so you can get that Eclipse going faster. It needs 2 turns to complete and we cannot start nuking until those 2 turns are done. The other thing I wanted to show you, the 3rd skill is now available, but because I don't have the slave mark on any of the enemy units, I can only click on my allies. So let me just start with one of these guys. We put the slave mark on him, and on the next turn, you're gonna see that the Oblivion, I, whatever the heck it's called, that third skill, is now available to be cast on this unit. We're gonna give Hades the double turn again, and now that we have the slave mark on this first guy, we can actually target him. And hopefully these units are gonna attack Hades, although I can't really quite remember what happened in the last turn, if they attacked me or not. They're supposed to attack the slowest. But anyway, watch what happens when I click on this guy. Even though now I have the slave mark on him, they're attacking Luna, Jesus Christ. Even though I now have the slave mark on him, my contract with this first unit here on the left remains. It doesn't matter what you do after the contract is established, it will always be with the same person until the effect runs out, and it can only be used once per battle. I'm gonna double turn Hades one last time here to demonstrate the strength of his attack. And the Eclipse completes. The second his round comes along, I don't have to click on anything. The skill triggers automatically, all the enemy units get their max HP drop, and the skill now becomes the individual nuke. I'm gonna use it on this guy over here, because the other one I have a contract with, even though nobody's attacking Hades. But you can see here, let me slow down the speed. Because the skill is maxed, all of the damage that we do is gonna get turned into HP for Hades. So that's 105,000. And Hades heals for 105,000. It's disgusting. Whatever part of the heal is not used because he's already at max HP or whatever, that heal or that extra HP gets turned into max HP. So his max available life is gonna keep going up until he gets to 180%. And that's it for the area. We're gonna go do an arena battle now. Alright, we're here in Arena and I've chosen to fight this guy, although he's a little bit lower level than our account level, he's got an Athena with the with the God Claw, so I'm gonna go fight this guy, just to see what Athena can do, and I don't know what she can do, so this could backfire tremendously horribly. We're also gonna be fighting an enemy Hades, so we'll see if Minerva's AI, <laughs> the computer AI, is smarter than me. I'm gonna keep the same team we had yesterday for the Spanish review because it actually worked quite well uh, and we have enough energy to transform our chicken and to use the Eclipse on round one, right? So I'm gonna get this thing started, that way uh, they, they don't, they can't get any crazy ideas about nuking me. Let's see, my Iki's gonna move next and I'm gonna transform him for sure. Or maybe we don't transform him right away. We just get this thing going and then we charge, uh, we, uh, we charge the attack power. Yeah, 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 let's do that. Guys, I have no idea what this Athena does. I am suddenly very scared because I realize that I have no clue what she does. I think that she becomes immune to damage or some shit like that. Anyway, we're gonna use the Eclipse. Always use the Eclipse on turn one. And this is a really cool team because Poseidon can do stuff for zero energy and Pandora can get her aura healing thing off for zero energy as well, right? So on the enemy line, I think I'm gonna try to get rid of, uh, shoot, I actually don't know, Luna. <laughs> Whatever, let's stretch the fight out a little bit. Athena activates her uh, thing, which I don't know what it does. We're gonna get this thing off in case they apply any... They don't really have any debuffs, do they? This is gonna be completely useless. Alright, they're starting to do some damage. I'm gonna get this thing off again, because uh, I think Athena also grants like additional energy, so this Doku is gonna be able to attack quite often. Mm, here I'm gonna transform, but I'm gonna do it with the HP, because I think they're gonna kill my chicken before he has a chance to move. The enemy Hades is faster. So the enemy Hades' Eclipse is gonna be done before ours, but we have chicken. We have chicken. Oh, did you see that? The enemy Kiki's soul was there, and our chicken just annihilated it. <laughs> it just annihilated. Let's try to... 
Let's try to use uh, this thing, the contract, on Athena. Maybe we can force them to kill themselves or something like that. And I'm gonna start doing some... Nothing. I'm gonna do a summon so that our chicken activates one more time. Alright? Now, next turn, our Eclipse is gonna be complete. No! Did we kill her? I don't wanna kill her! Oh, no, 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 no! Wait, wait, wait! No! Athena! Oh, shit! She's back! Wait! <laughs> she's back! Wait, wait, wait! She's back and I can't kill her! But she can't be healed either. Did you see that? Holy crap. Okay, 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 okay. I don't think this enemy team is gonna kill any of my units. I don't think so. But enemy Hades' Eclipse is gonna be done here. There it goes. Triggers automatically. All my units are gonna lose... Uh, I don't know what his skill-ups are. Oh, and he can start doing the individual nuke. Athena is still indestructible. The enemy Hades moves twice because Luna's there. Now our Eclipse triggers. And we have the individual nuke available. And what I'm gonna do is... The, the, the slave mark is gone. I'm gonna try to kill this Hades, because this Hades is really starting to hurt. Alright? Can we nuke it in one turn? 51,000. Oh, he's got Rising Dragon Teeth. You see, that's the Cosmo we suggested. I'm gonna do an AoE attack here, try to maybe finish off this Hades, and I should have clicked on somebody else to get... Yes, Hades is gone, but Athena's still there. And she's doing something. I don't... Why is she still there? <laughs> Why is she still there? What the heck is happening? Uh, Athena's unkillable. Athena's actually unkillable. Now, unfortunately, I don't have Luna, so I can't do double... She just healed some ghost thing over here. Did you guys see... Okay, the effect is gone. So it looks like Athena's effect only lasts for a couple of rounds. Mm, I am not going to transform with the chicken here. I'm gonna do some individual level damage, and I really just want to finish. Now, we couldn't see the damage redistribution for Hades, because our mark was mysteriously gone somehow. I don't even know how it got removed. But this, this Doko is dead. That's 58,000 damage. And we don't have any buffers. Remember, Hades can also benefit from like data loss, Nachi, all of those guys. Uh, I don't need a heal here, but this uh, Marina is just going to stretch out the fight. All right, this is done. We can skip to the end. And that's going to be it for today, guys. That's the full Hades review. Hopefully it's useful for you guys to decide if you want to summon him, or though I think most of us want to get him, and how to build him if you do get him. Best of luck in your summons. Now, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is his use in the game is probably going to be mostly PvP right now. I believe there's some dungeons in the future where he will be useful, so if those come along, if those get released this Wednesday or in a couple of weeks, then we'll do a specialized video for them. I remind you once again that the last two days of this banner will coincide with the cat, so think very carefully whether you want to summon now or wait for the cat, hit it as hard as you can, Get more summons and get him then. I'll leave you here for now. Please remember to hit like, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so you don't miss any videos, and I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye!